What's going on, everybody? And welcome to the other side of the firewall podcast, where we talk about the latest and greatest in cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who've made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams. As always, I'm joined by Shan Tynes. What's up? What's up? And Levon Maynard. And welcome to the show. And proverbial firewall. That messed up, but we're going to keep it going. <laughs> I got tongue tied. Um, hey, welcome to the show. Um, Monday and Tuesday are our topics. Uh, Wednesday is our discussion, which is this episode. And then Fridays, we talk about everything aside from cyber. So movies, books, games, all that good stuff. So non-cyber related stuff. Um, but thank you for uh, for tuning in. Um, definitely like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. I keep forgetting to mention the other episodes. So if this is your first time listening or if you're a long time listener, either way, share with your friends. We greatly appreciate it. Please leave us comments. Uh, I do read them. Uh, I'm trying to keep up and talk about them on the show um, and kind of like make it sync up in a timely manner. Sometimes I don't um, sometimes I don't get there, but I, I definitely respond to all of them uh, and wherever they've been posted. So YouTube or, or what have you. But let's get into this article uh, comes from VentureBeat. It's titled Report. 90 percent of orgs believe cybersecurity risk isn't being addressed. So this this topic comes up time over time. Right. But um, usually a lot of these reports are over in the UK. So I, I, I liked how this one was, uh, was more close to home, had uh, more relevant data to the, uh, to the states. So it says, according to Foundry's 2022 security priority study, an overwhelming majority, 90% of security leaders believe their organization is falling short in addressing cybersecurity risk. Uh, those surveyed experienced these pitfalls from different issues, such as convincing the severity of risk to all of to all or parts of their organization to 27 percent and the belief in the organization isn't investing enough resources to address risk at 26 percent so that if i were to, to guess these are your uh your, your CISOs, these are your v CISOs, these are your um your chief techno technology officers these are people who are in the either in the c-suite or adjacent to the c-suite that have a uh have a skin in the game when it comes to cyber, as opposed to not to knock the other side of the, the, the suite, but those are more focused on the business, right? They want to um, make money, they want to save money, they want to um, you know bring value to their shareholders, and they may not understand uh, all of what it takes to be secure uh, in the, uh, the cyber landscape. So it says budgets continue playing a factor in a company's cybersecurity uh, efforts as well. For small businesses, businesses the security budget has jumped to uh, 16 million from 11 million last year and 5.5 million in 2020. Um, so it's getting pretty expensive, right? But again, uh, how much is your security worth? Um, this, this is not a, um, this is not something that you can save money now and then come out on top in the future. Like if you do not invest the proper amount of money to begin with or to continue to um, invest money into your company's cybersecurity teams and, uh, um, software, hardware, things of that nature. So the accessories, um, it will come to bite you in the, uh, later on down the road. But <clears throat> lose my voice. What do you guys think about this? Yeah, I think it's uh, um, covered pretty well. But I think the um, the whole thing with companies allocating money for the cybersecurity readiness, it's like uh, I think it has a lot to do with. Uh, Maybe the, I'm trying to think about how to say, it, but pretty much the cost versus the reward, or like the cost versus like uh, the cost of cybersecurity versus like what it's going to cost them if something gets compromised. And I think there are some some situations where I think companies think that if they uh, get compromised, that it's instead of spending you know five million dollars a a year on cybersecurity, um, if they do have an incident, it's only going to cost them uh, I don't know. Uh, two million dollars to get it resolved kind of thing right like, right the, the, like uh, the risk you're, you're assessment thinking, you're thinking yeah. R roi return on investment so if you yeah. invest in the cybersecurity, right like what does it what does it get you out of that right right because right. i think like you know <laughs> we talked about it before some companies out there i don't want to name any names right now but they want to give you like a, a free year of uh, some sort of uh, identity protection and that's like that's that's supposed to be like the 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 fixed action that's, that's that takes care of everything. You don't have to worry about your, you know, you got a year of uh, identity protection. After a year and a day, then uh, it's all on you. 
<laughs> but, you, you ain't gonna mention no names, but you might want to check to make sure your phone still works. So right, just, exactly. <laughs> Let me find my phone. I don't want to mention any names, but my my provider better be coming through. <laughs> right. But uh, yeah. So I think that you know it has something to do. It has something a part partly uh, to do with some of the I don't know some of the budget, budgeting concerns I can think with some companies, but at the same time. You know, like we've been talking about for a while now, I think it kind of gets thrown by the wayside. It doesn't become a big deal until they get compromised. And then all of a sudden, it's all hands on deck. Everybody's got to um, got to get on top of uh, whatever incident they're trying to handle and got to save face and get in and get in, uh, um, you know, send out some news bulletins and make sure everybody feels comfortable that they're going to be taking care of it and make sure everybody's got their year of uh, identity protection and all this kind of stuff uh, and, 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 and uh, advocating that, you know, it's never going to happen again. But we need to do, you know, these companies need to make sure that they're budgeting ahead of time. Security should be like up at the forefront of, of their uh, business practice and, and making sure that, you know, th this kind of helps build trust with the customers too. If they know that your company is, is taking the, the, uh, the best foot forward and, you know, to try to make sure that they're, they, became, they, they, they maintain their, uh, their uh, a solid like uh, security state. Um, because I mean, once you lose come to, uh, trust with your customer, I mean, they're gonna they're gonna jump ship, and they may find some other cell phone provider, or they may find you know another uh, uh, you know phone company, or like another um, uh, you know whatever uh, product that you that you can that you can think of. Because you know you gotta you gotta make sure that your, your customers feel comfortable comfortable that you're gonna take care of them, to make sure that your your credentials are gonna be uh, secure, and that your information, your social security number, your your email address, your your address and all this kind of stuff, date of birth, all that stuff needs to be secured um, and uh, not available to anybody else. But what do you think about this one, Shannon? So I, I got a couple of thoughts, right? So Ryan, those numbers you were reading off, right? Like 5.5 million to 11 million to 16 million. So yeah, do we, and this is for small businesses. I get that. It's not for large enterprises, it's for small businesses. But my fear is that those numbers are going to start going down because of us coming out of COVID. My, my thinking is that those numbers went up because of COVID and because idle hands do the work of the devil, right? So people were at home, they're doing script kitty stuff. They were doing all the ransomware attacks, hacking these places. And it was a big issue then, right? But as we start to come out, come out of COVID, because apparently it's no longer a pandemic, right? That's been announced already, no longer a pandemic. Um, my fear is that they're going to start looking at the numbers, right? Because for those cybersecurity services, they were in demand, right? So these companies that provide them, they're like, okay, we can charge a little bit more, right? Because we're, we're the hot thing right now. You know what I mean? We the, we the new Jordans, you know what I'm saying? So we can charge, we can charge that premium. You know what I'm saying? And I think what's going to happen is that they're going to look at that bill as it comes up again, you know, that notice as, as with all cybersecurity products, right? They give you that notice ahead of time. Hey, your, your license is about to expire. Your service is about to expire. You know, here, here's what the new quote is or whatever it may be. And they're going to look at it and be like, you know, we didn't really get hit hard th these last two years. You know what I mean? Maybe we can forgo this, right? We don't need any antivirus. Like, oh no, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that'll be the mistake they make. That's my that's my fear is that that's what's driving yeah. this is that COVID made it to where they started spending all this money. And then um, it just takes a year or two of it not being as bad as it was and then to say, I can forgo it. And that's going to be a mistake. You know what I mean? Yeah. The mm -hmm. other the other thing I saw in here that I wanted to address, right? So um, so they have a paragraph in here that they said, looking towards cyber insurance, a growing sector close to a quarter of organizations say that they have cyber insurance on their radar and only 23% are not interested. So what does on mm -hmm. their radar mean? It didn't, it didn't say they actually have cyber insurance. It just says, I was thinking about it. You know what I mean? 23% right. said, no, we're not even thinking about it. The other ones are like, yeah, it's on the radar. You know what I mean? But there's no guarantee that they're going to get it, right? So- even knowing the climate of today, right, that we are coming out of, this still isn't sparking these companies to say, yeah, we should probably look into this so that we don't, we don't take those hits, right? Like, so like we were mentioning earlier, the return on investment, like to them, they're like, it's not worth it. Like, I don't, I don't want to spend like for an enterprise, right? They're like, I don't want to spend $150,000 a year on this, right? I could spend that in advertising. I could spend it on mm. pay right. bumps for the C-suite or whatever it may be, right? Like right. That, that, that's what's, that's what kind of kills me with this, right? Like at when it comes to like all those positions you were talking about that 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 more than likely did this survey, right? Like the visas, CIO, CTO, whatever it may be. 
How has it gotten to the point where they don't have enough in these last two years? They don't have enough backing. They don't have enough to go to the, you know, their fellow C-suiters and say, hey, we need to look into this. This is where the business will hurt, right? Like they have plenty of examples they can put out there to say, this is where it will hurt us. This is how much it will cost us. This is why we should spend this much. The ROI is worth it. You know what I mean? Um, that That's what gets me is that um, how, how much, what I, I, I would, I would love to be in some of these boardrooms or in some of these conference rooms, right? To see where the thinking goes between the CEO, CIO, CTO, whatever, right? CFO, right? Because that's the financial person. Like what yeah. they're saying is like, yeah, we don't want to spend that for this, that, and the third. I'm, I'm just curious because, I mean, I can't even say the writing is on the wall. Like, like it, it's it's written in marker on the wall for the last two years. Like children have gone, children have been all over the wall just marking it up for the last two years. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's not like this is something that they didn't, they they have to look into seeing coming. Like, no, it happened. Like, like you turn to the CEO, be like, hey, Bob, remember when you were putting gas in plastic bags and putting it in your trunk? Yeah, that's what this is going to protect. He's like, yeah, it was crazy times. Yeah. Crazy times. <laughs> yeah. like, we don't want to see that again. You know what I mean? Right. So but that's that's kind of what I get out of this, man, is like it's it's a sad state of affairs that this is where this is where these companies are to where they're like, yeah, we're thinking about it, but uh, yeah, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, but it, it, so it also addressed the, the the shortage, right? So it says to um, cybersecurity skills shortage says to address it nearly half so 45% of IT leaders are asking current staff to take on more responsibilities and utilize technologies that automate security priorities. Uh, 42% are outsourcing security functions, while 36% are increasing compensation and improving benefits. So those numbers are kind of all over the place, right? So like some of it's like, yeah, we don't have staff and we're going to outsource to uh, someone else to take care of it for us. We're going to ask our current staff to do more than uh, they've been doing before. But then there was the 36% are increasing compensation and improving benefits. So they are trying to find people and pull them in to, uh, to do what's necessary. So it's kind of kind of kind of a, a mixed signal there. Um, but some are doing the right thing. So, so let me ask you this. Does 36% not seem low, though? Like when I hear 36%, I'm like, yeah. everything we do involves technology, right? Like every single thing you do, right? Yeah. Like, like like previous story, right? When it comes to emergency services, when it comes to real estate, when it, like it it should be a staple in what you do, right? Like it should be a staple in, in what needs to be protected in these companies, right? Yeah. Just imagine, like it, like an easy thing you can say to them is just be like, just imagine for a second you didn't have your your uh, your uh, cell phone, right? To conduct business from or whatever. I was getting ready to say Blackberry. Right. I shouldn't say Blackberry. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but it was but, say preposterous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But but that's but that's kind of what it is, right? Like as much as we rely on technology nowadays, like that's what they need to be thinking about is um just just give them that option, right? It's like uh Matthew McConaughey and what's what's the movie with uh with Sam Jackson where he's on trial where he tells the story and then he tells them to imagine that they're white. Oh uh, you, you know what I'm talking about, but like, just hit them with that, yeah. right? Now, just imagine your cell phone, your your Apple doesn't work anymore and you can't conduct any business. They're like, oh, oh, <laughs> cross your pearls, oh. cross your pearls, oh, right. you know what I mean? Like everybody, everybody uses their phone for business nowadays. It's just, it's just the way of the world. So yeah. I don't know. It just, it, that percentage seems very low for me when technology is all around us and it's used all the time. Yeah, for everything, right? For um, everything. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but so we'll, we'll see what the next survey says. So this was the, this is actually a 2020 this, was this year's survey. Yeah. 2022. Cause yeah. we're getting, yeah, we're getting to the end of it. Right. <laughs> Perhaps 23s will be more um, advantageous to, uh, to cyber, but like the past couple of weeks, like, you know, I mean, articles I saw about cyber teams getting fired. I was like, is it the same team? Or like <laughs> different people reporting on it or are they just letting their guys go? and uh outsourcing so it's it's like you may be correct like maybe now that we're coming out of the pandemic uh the cyber is going back to the back burner but uh we just had a colonial pipeline that just happened like that that was this summer so um we'll see what comes of it um we'll see what, what happens next year like we're going to the holidays uh last holidays everything was locked down and that was some of the worst times when it came to ransomware attacks 
Um, you had uh, water treatment plants getting attacked on, on, on top of it, right, in Florida. So we'll see what comes of it. We'll see what, what next year holds after the new year, right? We'll start to see if um, things are starting to, to change and more money's being invested. Because uh, the, the government's starting to, to sway that way, so maybe the rest of the industry will follow. Um, but with that being said, because I think we're, I didn't start the timer, and I think we're a little bit over. Um, definitely hit up all of our websites that go by our name. Uh, you can hit me up personally. I'm at Rye Rye Security Guy. That's R-Y-R-Y Security Guy. I'm on LinkedIn, Clubhouse, and uh, Twitter. And you, LeVon? Yes, sir. You can hit me up on the Twitters at LeVon Maynard. There it is. Stay safe. Stay secure. Take care. Thank you.